Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for attending this afternoon's session of uh, Web3 Builders. Uh, today, we're really happy to, to have Centrifuge on, uh, who will be talking about their awesome project. But um, before we, we get started with them, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the Foundation's grants program. Um, Centrifuge has received a, a couple of grants, actually, to make some, some really useful tools. So before they get started, just wanted to kind of give you a bit more information about that program in case it's something you guys are interested in, uh, in ever pursuing. So the Foundation's grants program primarily exists to fund software development. We also fund research and technical education efforts as well. Uh, and importantly, everything is related to Polkadot and Substrate. So we've been around for, for just over a year. Uh, it was started in late 2019. And this nice little infographic here gives you kind of a summary of, of the amount of projects we've supported and the amount of applications. So there's actually, it says there's been 200 um, submitted applications, but there's actually been this about 250 almost. Um, this graphic was made at the end of last year and is actually already out of date because of how popular the program has, has gotten, which is really awesome. And so we have, it says 62 projects were approved, but we actually have almost 100 projects approved now. Um, we're going to do a nice announcement of our 100th approved grant project very soon, which is really exciting. And then, you know, it, probably about the majority of projects have actually delivered a portion of their grant. And then we have about uh, 20 that have actually finished, which is great. <laughs> In terms of the development areas that we're interested in, um, this kind of gives you, this chart to the right gives you a, a really good kind of summary of, of what we've supported so far, which is mostly uh, runtime modules actually. So um, basically kind of the, uh, the core of what goes into building a, a Polkadot parachain. So this has been about a third of all projects, but then we're also focused on uh, really a lot of other things. So like developer tooling, uh, user experience, wallets, uh, variety of uh, APIs, deployment tooling, bridges. Um, yeah, and then kind of various other areas. So I won't kind of go on too long, but if you guys are interested in getting more information about our grants program, you can go to grants.web3.foundation, which has a lot of information about uh, our general grants program. We also have a, an open grants program, which is really designed to just be a lot faster in terms of kind of application submission and approval than our general program. So this would be for smaller grants. And uh, you can actually submit an application and, and get an approval or, or not within sometimes as little as a few days, which is really exciting. Um, if you guys have a project in mind and kind of want to get an idea if it's in an area of interest of ours, feel free to just email me. Um, my email address and telegram are at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, always happy to discuss uh, any projects people are working on. Awesome. So without further ado, Cassidy is going to get us started and talk a bit about Centrifuge. Hey everyone. Uh, thanks, Dita, for the introduction. Um, I'm going to start to share my slides now. Um, so bear with me while I do that. All right, um, can someone give me the thumbs up, uh, the audio that you can see the slides? Looks great. Okay, perfect. Um, so my name is Cassidy. Uh, I work on token design and research at Centrifuge. Um, I'll be starting and uh, later on, we're gonna have Philip Stanislaus um, also present specifically about the Web3 grants that we've received. And he's a software engineer on Centrifuge chain. Um, so just a little um, uh, outline of what we're going to talk about today. So I'm just going to introduce you to Centrifuge, what we're doing, 
um, the problem that we're tackling, uh, and then speak a little bit about Centrifuge Chain, which is built on Substrate, and then I'll hand it off to Philip. We'll go into the grants that we've received and how other teams will be able to use the things that we've built there, uh, as well as the custom Substrate modules that we're working on. And hopefully we have a little bit of time at the end for some of your questions. Um, so first, an introduction to Centrifuge. Uh, so the main thing that we're tackling uh, as, a, as a problem is global B2B spend, business-to-business uh, -business spend. And, and what that really is, is invoices. Um, so the problem with invoices today is that oftentimes it takes, an aver on average, uh, 60 days to actually get paid for, for an invoice. Um, and that's it, it really makes it hard for businesses, um, especially small and medium-sized businesses, to bridge that gap. Um, and so they need financing for, for that time period. Um, and for a small and medium-sized business, um, it's actually pretty hard to get financing today. So the existing solutions out there really only tackle a small portion of total global B2B spend. So we built Centrifuge OS um, to give businesses greater access to financing, and we think um, we can unlock value that's previously been inaccessible. Um, so what is the Centrifuge stack? Um, it starts off at the base layer uh, as a peer-to-peer -peer messaging protocol. Um, businesses are able to exchange documents such as invoices using this protocol, and then use Centrifuge chain to actually tokenize those invoices. Um, using Tinlink, which is built on top, and, and hopefully other dApps as well that would be built on Centrifuge Chain, they're then able to access financing through DeFi. Um, and so we've built this whole system to really allow these small and medium-sized businesses in particular, but, but really any business, to have greater access to financing. And our mission is to change the rules of global trade as they exist today, and foster economic opportunity everywhere. Um, so we really see Centrifuge as uh, a system of coordination for global trade. And we've designed it to be minimally extractive and provide an incentive to connect businesses with their customers. Um, we built this design for scale, and we believe that, that Centrifuge is, is like a global trade protocol, and we think that's why it needs to be public and open. So here's a look at how Centrifuge works. So a supplier such as Laces Inc. here, they would send an invoice to their buyer. The buyer would verify the information in that invoice and sign it as well, um, and then use Centrifuge chain to anchor that, that document. Um, then the supplier is able to mint a token that represents that invoice. Um, and use the bridge that we're working on to Ethereum to connect to the DeFi ecosystem to then be able to access financing for that asset. Um, so the reason we designed Centrifuge Chain was to optimize specifically for this use case that you see here. Um, so this focus really allows us to improve upon the current architecture that we have um, and I think the key ways that we do that is through the speed um, of the transactions themselves, the cost, uh, the storage efficiencies that we're able to do with custom substrate modules, uh, as well as targeted use cases such as privacy. So we really see Centrifuge Chain uh, as the gateway for real world assets um, to the blockchain multiverse. Um, so saying that meaning, we really think that we, we see a, an ecosystem of many coexisting chains. Um, so that's including Polkadot, Ethereum, and Centrifuge Chain. Um, we're building Centrifuge Chain on Parity Substrate actually to move faster, use a consistent approach for um, these building block features, um, and at the same time be able to develop things like a standardized bridge to Ethereum that can be reused by other projects. And this in turn increases the interoperability that we have. Um, Substrate also will allow us to really easily tap into the Polkadot ecosystem um, at a future point in time and also reuse existing modules um, to connect with other blockchains in the future. Um, so again, we really envision this kind of large ecosystem of many connected blockchains 
um, and uh, centrifuge chain being a part of that. Um, so we've also built TinLink on top um, as a way to access financing. So Centrifuge OS is really just a generic peer-to-peer -peer network for businesses. Um, and then the first use case that we're targeting is to finance real world assets um, that exist off chain and bring them on chain, tokenize them um, and allow them to access financing. So Centrifuge and TinLink together, we believe, create a hub for on-chain finance. So we're working together with asset originators. Um, so this one example of a um, company that we're working with is called Paper Chain. Um, they bring in assets such as music royalties, and we connect them to DeFi lending protocols such as Maker, um, and allow those artists uh, to access financing through DeFi. So we really think that this product in Lake will be a value driver for centrifuge chain. Um, and it will allow moving to Lake over to centrifuge chain will allow scalability, um, greater performance, lower costs, as well as our targeted use case of privacy. Um, and we think being able to change the way that financing exists today. So a little bit of overview of where we are now. So we've financed five different types of assets um, through a pilot together with Maker, uh, which was about 280,000 die that we financed. Um, Maker has been heavily involved and um, our assets are on track to be the first real world assets in multi-collateral DAI. Um, we also got a grant to build and launch centrifuge chain from uh, the city of Berlin as well as Europe. And we've got these wonderful Web3 Foundation grants um, and we're developing this bridge to Ethereum, which Philip Stanislaus will also go into um, in a couple minutes. So first, I'm just going to give you an overview of where we are with Centrifuge Chain, which is built on Substrate. So we have launched um, our Amber testnet, um, which is awesome. Um, and our timeline, uh, we're aiming to get um, mainnet soft launch um, around mid-March. Um, the, both of the test nets, Flint and Amber, are live now, um, and you can see them on telemetry. And um, they will continue to exist even after we launch mainnet. Um, so we, we will keep Flint, Amber, as well as mainnet um, going forward. Um, so a little bit of overview of, of the chain itself. So Centrifuge Chain uses its own native radial token. Um, testnet tokens are available through this faucet thanks to BlockX Labs. Um, the economic incentives are, are very similar to Polkadot, and we are looking for validators uh, as it's a proof of stake chain. And we're running a validator program, so if you're interested in that, definitely reach out to us. Um, and then in terms of the on-chain governance that we have, right now we have a council with five seats, and we've passed two referenda so far to expand the validator set. Um, so that's been pretty exciting to, to experiment with. So now I'm going to hand it off to Philip Stanislaus, who's going to go into uh, the grants that we've received and what we've, what we've built. Thank you, Cassidy. Hi, everyone. Uh, Philip speaking here. I'm working on the engineering team at Centrifuge. And um, if you have any questions during the couple of slides, I will show you. Um, there should be a ask a question button somewhere on your screen. And I would appreciate if you type your question in there so it's easier to find them afterwards. Cool. Um, let's start. Cassidy, could you go to the first slide of my part? Thank you. Uh, we got two grants so far from Web3 from Web Foundation. The first one um, is for Go Substrate RPC client, uh, also called GSRPC. Uh, the idea here is that you can interact with any substrate-based chain, including Polkadot, uh, Kusama, um, from Go from a Go code base. And GSRPC is already used by multiple teams. Um, the features are getting information from the chain, um, doing all the RPC calls that also Polkadot JS API supports, subscribing to events and to state changes and also submitting extrinsics, as well as encoding and decoding things. So it should be everything you need uh, to interact with your chain. 
Um, GSRPC is maintained by us. We are just upgrading um, to a new version of um, the metadata. And um, it has been released at the end of 2019. So it's fairly stable right now. Um, it's released under Apache 2.0. And you can find some links to the source code and the docs here on the slide. And on the right-hand side here, the in engineers uh, amongst you have probably seen that there's some code on how GSRPC looks in practice. This is just a small example on how to fetch new um, blocks on your heads of a substrate-based chain. Next slide, please. The second grant we got is uh, a joint grant for us and Chainsafe, uh, who's helping us to build a general purpose Ethereum substrate bridge. Um, this bridge we are building right now, we do need that because Tinleg is currently on Ethereum. And the anchors that Cassidy mentioned earlier, anchors being hashes of invoices, are sent in the future to send a future chain. So we need to bring these, these um, hashes some, somehow over to Ethereum. And that's why we are building a bridge on our own. It will be general purpose, though, soon. So it will support ERC-20 and also ERC-721 tokens at some point. Um, it's currently under construction. We expect the first release with a trusted setup that's using Threshold or multisigs in order to bring any assets from Centrifuge chain over to Ethereum. And we will expect that um, in the mid of February, which is in the next couple of days. Um, it also supports deduplication of messages. So if there's an event on a substrate-based chain, it will not send uh, a transaction to Ethereum more than once. And um, two-way transfer of ERC-20 tokens will also be released in the next couple of days. Um, the second version of that bridge will add trustless features, um, meaning that there will be some economic incentive for bridge operators to behave correctly, and um, also NFT transfers or ERC-721 transfers should be supported. Cool, that's the two grants. And I, I'm also excited to announce or to uh, tell you about a few of the custom modules we've built that I think could be useful to your chains and to your teams uh, to draw inspiration from or to reuse. Next slide, please. Thank you. So the first one is a optimized Merkle proof uh, validator. So the idea here is that you can submit Merkle proofs um, to that module, and it will cache hashes so it can compute the Merkle root faster over time. Um, the reason why we built that is that on Ethereum, um, we need, whenever an NFT is minted, we need to, or the, the invoice owner, the document owner, needs to prove that they are allowed to mint the NFT. And for that use case, we built something that can um, get faster over time so we don't spend much resources on the validation part. Uh, centrifuge chain is currently audited, and um, it is the whole centrifuge chain is released under LGPL 3.0. Um, as soon as the audit is done, I think this might be interesting for some of your teams to check out. Next slide, please. The second module is a state rent module. Um, the idiomatic way to prevent a lot of state on substrate chains is normally through deposits. So, for example, if you want to use the recovery palette in substrate, you need to deposit a few uh, KSM or, or dots in order to, to store something on chain. But since we have so many invoices per day, one Fortune 500 company has 18,000 um, just on one day, we want to have a concept that is more time-based. So what we implemented is a, a way to charge fees per day. So um, a company can predetermine how long they want their invoice or their anchor of the invoice on chain and can pay upfront a rent for that. And that rent module, module is implemented under that source code link you can find here. Um, the idea is that any other module or any other palette can uh, call pay fee, and the fee will be deducted from the payer. But it also allows the council or root through governance to change fees at any point. And that's an important feature to steer how, or economically set incentives to prevent attacks, but also 
um, to make it cheap enough for people to use the chain. Okay, and the next slide, please. This one is the last slide I have here. Um, and I think it's the most interesting or most useful to many of the other teams building on top of Substrate, um, especially if you're going towards mainnet. So right now in Substrate, there are multisigs, but the multisigs have one major downside, which is that they dynamically or deterministically generate an address based on the signatories that can sign any of these transactions and the threshold. Whenever you change any of the members of the multisig, like you know, one of your team members gets replaced or um, disappears and you want to remove them from the multisig, it means that your address will change. And that's a big problem if you use a multisig for things like staking, because you have an unbonding period, meaning one of your founding members leaves, you need to remove them from the multisig. That means you need to unbond the stake, wait for 30 days uh, until the stake is free, then move the tokens and then restake them, which is an annoyance, but which is also, um, which also means that you lose staking rewards. And that's why we um, talked to some of the Substrate uh, team or the Parity engineers. And we are currently having an open pull request towards Substrate that is implementing so-called multi-accounts, which means there is an account that's, that's stored on chain where you can at any time change the members and also the threshold for the signatories. And um, you can dispatch any calls with that. So it's closely mod modeled after the multi-sig that Substrate provides. And you can find a link to the pull request here. Um, it's waiting to be merged into Substrate, uh, but we have very close communication through the grants program and the Substrate Builders program uh, to Web3 Foundation. So we're trying to accelerate that process a bit. And that is all from my side. Um, next slide, please. So the question is where to go from here. And firstly, we would love to see more people running validators on Ember. Um, you can, there's a guide and a link on this slide to that guide uh, where you can find all the steps needed to bootstrap your own node. Um, there are Docker files, but there's also bare metal setup uh, guide. And then you can get tokens and play around uh, with Ember. Uh, we are happy to invite you all to our public or community Slack where you can ask questions and stay in touch with us and also get notifications about updates. And of course, we invite everyone to use the open source code we've built. Um, most importantly, probably the Substrate um, Go Substrate RPC client. Um, and that's, I think, it. We have a thank you slide, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Um, all right, so that's it. Uh, we have another seven minutes for your questions, and I'm happy to answer any of those. Um, Kazi, you too? Let's see. So there are two questions here. Uh, first question is, how far along is the Go Substrate RPC implementation? Um, the implementation is done. We got the grant was, was finished and delivered. It got released last, I believe, December, shortly before Christmas. Um, but it's actively maintained, meaning, as you probably all know, Substrate is moving quite fast. So there are lots of changes, and sometimes that breaks GSRPC. So, um, but since we are building our own Substrate-based chain, we are constantly upgrading and trying to keep uh, GSRPC working with the latest releases. The next question is... Um, to elaborate what Tinlake does. Um, and Tinlake is, um, I guess it's, um, you would call it a securitization protocol. So it's creating a pool of assets, such as a pool of invoices, um, but with a partner such as Paper Chain, it's a, a pool of these music royalties, um, or with another partner like um, Future Finance, it is a pool of uh, mortgages. Um, so real estate, and uh, what that allows is that it's much easier to then access um, lending from something like MCD. So instead of opening um, or getting a, 
uh, requesting from MKR holders to vote on every single asset um, into MCD, you're actually just voting on a type of asset and um, basically like very specific parameters for a Tin Lake pool. Um, and then there's only one, I guess it's called a vault now, uh, open for this entire pool of assets. Um, and then an, an admin for the pool can actually manage the assets coming in. So in, in these cases, it would be the originator themselves, the originator being the paper chain or the future finance, these, these projects. Um, and they would manage the assets coming in that they are originating. Um, and manage the CDP and the assets coming in and the DAI flowing through um, for as one specific example. I hope that answers uh, the question pretty well. The next question is, uh, can you talk about identity versus account? Do you implement or use KYC and AML? I think this is, let me try to answer it from a technical point of view and maybe Cassidy, you can talk about the KYC AML stuff. <laughs> Um, so identity versus account, there's an identity palette in Substrate that allows you to add fields to your account ID, um, which means your address can have your name or your website, things like that. And um, the, uh, what, what we implemented with the multi-six uh, thing is the ability for teams, like multiple people or multiple account IDs to manage funds, but also dispatch any calls on a Substrate-based chain. And that functionality already exists in Substrate in the utility palette, but um, we implemented a more powerful version that allows you to maintain the same account ID and also the same identity while using that, even if the members of that multi-account change. Hope that makes sense. Cassidy, do you want to say a word regarding KYC ML? Probably um, on. Yeah. I'd say in general, I mean, we want Centrifuge to be a completely open network that anyone can use, anyone can join. Um, and privacy is an important thing for us to implement because we don't want identity to, um, to be a part of it in the sense of um, identifying you as an individual or, or someone as a business, but rather perhaps reputation in terms of getting financing, for example. Um, so identity in that concept, yes. But in terms of KYC AML, that's not something that that is part of the system. That said, for a validator program, for the beginning, we are doing KYC AML if you want to join the program itself. But that doesn't mean you have to do, go through KYC or AML to be a validator. There is a faucet. You can get tokens, uh, and you can already get up um, and get started. And there will also be a faucet that we're working on for mainnet as well. Um, so it's not a requirement uh, per se but it is something that we're doing for the validator program. Um, and I hope that answers that question. In terms of other projects in the Polkadot universe we're working with, um, we're not working with anyone super closely right now. Um, we're more focused on getting partners in terms of getting assets onboarded, uh, as well as finding liquidity providers. Um, a little bit on the backstory of, of Centrifuge. Um, uh, and Tin Lake. Well, Centrifuge, uh, I know. Tin Lake, I'm actually, I, I kind of forget the backstory there. Um, but Centrifuge, the idea was uh, really taking apart the, the components of supply chain finance and that whole financial system and putting it back together again, the way a Centrifuge machine does. Um, so that was kind of the idea there. And that's actually part of the theme of our, our, of our website is these circles moving away and coming, coming together again. Um, in terms um, of this next question, I would just say, um, like for this music royalties payout for the white paper question, for example, um, I would definitely recommend that, that you check out our, uh, medium blog. Um, we have a really great post that goes into detail about how Tin Lake works, that goes into detail about this, um, paper chain pilot that we ran, um, as well as all kinds of other information that you might be interested in that you would normally look to a white paper for. I would say our Medium blog is the most up-to-date in terms of that. Um, and, and also feel free to reach out with specific questions to that email we provided, chain at centrifuge.io, um, or on our community Slack, you can always ask questions there. I just uh, pasted two links into the chat, one to the white papers and one to the Medium blog for future reference.
Yeah, I would say, I mean, the white paper might be interesting to, to have a little bit more idea of the backstory, but in terms of the most up-to-date information, that's definitely going to be our blog. Yeah. And um, so the next question, who is your most important initial target customer? Since you mentioned Fortune 500, how will you help enterprises use your platform if they can't touch tokens? Um, interesting. So we're actually, I mean, we're focused on, on enterprises that can touch tokens. Um, and we're, we're primarily working with um, the, the businesses in, in between, so to say. Um, so something like an e-invoicing system as one example, um, or paper chain is another good example that they're sitting in between the music agencies um, and the artists themselves and then getting the financing. So it's the paper chain that needs to deal with the tokens um, or this e-invoicing system or um, future finance, like these are the partners that we're working with um, that not only can touch tokens, but they're really interested in, in working with crypto focused projects. A lot of those projects, their back end is also um, blockchain focused. Um, so in terms of the internal compliance or accounting issues, we haven't encountered too much of that um, because of what we're focused on. Um, so I would say, yeah, on this music royalties payout example, just because I don't know uh, exactly where it was, where this question is coming from, I would recommend reading the blog post that we have about that. Um, There's a question asking whether the scope is limited to only Ethereum or also or Ether, Ethereum based DeFi um, dApps and projects, or whether we are also interested in working with other um DeFi projects and of course we are um, there will be bridges between many of the blockchain um, ecosystems and of course the polka dot kind of ecosystem is the first one for us to tap into so projects like laminar and others are highly interesting for us to talk to uh, since they have not uh, launched yet um, we are having initial conversations but there's nothing yet that can be announced yeah I would say we're definitely not limited to Ethereum-based DeFi systems, but it is the, the furthest along in terms of an ecosystem that we can tap into um, in addition to the existing financial ecosystem. So that's our first target and something that we can actually just get off the ground running with. Um, and so that's why we're, we're focused on launching and actually getting started. And definitely interested in other networks in the future as they come online. The last question is that I see here is, who validates transactions on Centrifuge? And um, the short answer is validators. Um, the longer one is that we are currently building our validator ecosystem. And of course, there's always the possibility to become a parachain or at least a para thread um, with the Wokadot ecosystem at some point. So. Um, the longer the longer term is not yet completely clear, but um, right now we are looking to onboard validators that put economic uh, some economic risk on stake, and that's how we guarantee that all transactions are are valid. Cool. Um, these were all the questions in the queue. If you have any others, please add them quickly. <laughs> um, otherwise, I think we would come to an end now, right, Cassidy? Yeah. Great. Awesome. Um, so let me just add our email there. Just in case you have any other questions that come up, feel free to email us, get in touch on our Slack. Thank you all for joining. Um, it was wonderful to, to see so many people interested in learning about the things that we've built. And thanks to Web3 for this builders program. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone.